Hey everyone, this is Tony Teaches Tech. I'm Tony, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to save your Elementor form data into a database. Now, there's definitely different solutions, different ways to go about this, uh, but this is going to be a custom solution. We're going to be saving the data that the user enters into our Elementor form directly to a MySQL database. So let's go ahead and get on into the tutorial here. Um, this really doesn't matter. I'm gonna be working with my video production company, Swamp View Productions, that I run with my friend. What we're gonna do is go to the dashboard and you wanna make sure that you have um, Elementor installed. So I'm actually not sure if you need the pro version. I do have that installed, um, but either way, I'll have uh, a link to Elementor down in the description below. So anyway, uh, let's go into our pages section and we're just gonna make a, a page, a demo page. We'll call it demo. Uh, data uh, test, something like that, and we'll edit that with Elementor. And just to keep things simple, we're gonna look for the form widget, we're gonna drag that into our layout here, and we're just gonna use the basic, you know, their default form with name, email, and message, and that does not have to be the case at all. You can have, you know, numbers or check boxes or whatever, um, but just to keep it simple, like I said, we're just gonna use these fields. Um, the goal here, we're gonna publish this. The goal here, and we're gonna look at it, is to, when somebody enters their information, so like Tony, Tony at TonyTeaches.tech and hello, love your site. When somebody sends this, clicks that button to send it, we want to insert that data directly into a database, okay? And if we come back over here to the Elementor editor, uh, what we're doing right now in this actions after submit tab is we're sending ourselves an email. And that's great, but we don't actually wanna do that. Um, there are these other solutions that I was alluding to, but none of them um, are custom solutions, right? I mean, the closest that you'll get to that is a webhook, but we don't even need a webhook. We can use the built-in um, hooks that Elementor gives us, and that's how we're gonna be able to insert this data into a database directly. So let's go ahead and since we removed that email action, let's just update it. There is gonna be no action, uh, but behind the scenes there actually is. So. Let's take a look. One more thing before we leave the editor. Under form fields, I just want to take note of what the ID of these um, elements are. So for the name field right here, that has an ID of name as you would expect. Email, same thing. It has an ID of email and message and ID of message. So that's good. We know that. Let's go ahead and first create our database table that we want to insert this data into. And for me, I'm using PHP my admin. You can definitely do this on the command line. Uh, PHP my admin is probably easiest if you have access to that. Um, so I do have that open here in another tab. In the database for my, my website swamp view is this one right here. So I'm gonna expand that and I'm just gonna make a new table here in that database. And the new table is going to have those three columns, those three types. So it's gonna be name, email, and message. And just again, to keep things simple, I'll just make these all uh, text, text of type text, right? And um, I think we're safe to keep everything the same. So let's go ahead and save that. Oops, we have to name the table. So what should we call our table? Um, do I have something, I'm looking at my cheat sheet over here. Do I have a name for that? Yes, I just called it demo. So we'll call it demo and we'll hit go. And if that works, uh, not sure what happened here. Let's refresh the page. I don't know if that actually <laughs> created that table for me or not. Um, let's check it out. I don't think it did. So bear with me for a second. Oh, it did. Okay, so here it is. We have our demo table. Um, it's just a little bit laggy right now. And I just want to show it to you when it loads what the, the structure of that is. Um, maybe it didn't. Okay, so it created the table, but it did not add those columns, I don't believe. 
So let's let's try that one more. Oh, it did. Okay, it did. So if we look at the structure of the table um, for demo, we should see. Yep. So we. Sorry about that. We have name, email, and message. Three columns. No data in the table yet. So how do we get the data from our form here in Elementor to the database? Well, if we go into our WordPress admin dashboard, we actually don't need to do anything else in here uh, unless we want to make changes, but that's not the case. We actually go to our WordPress admin dashboard, go to appearance and theme editor. Now, just real quick, I highly recommend that you install the child theme if you're using hello to install the hello theme to install the hello child theme or whatever theme you're using to install that child theme so that you're not working directly with um, the core functionality of your WordPress website. I'll have a video about that that I'll link um, in this video or down below. So um, I am using my child theme as you can see here and what I want to do is go into my theme functions.php file and just at the bottom or wherever you want to put the code come down in here and i will have this code again linked um, down in the description if you don't want to type it um, but we want to paste the following code and this this i found um, the structure of this code uh, just google elementor forms api that's where this comes from most of it um, but except for the database stuff Okay, so basically this is a hook that anytime a form is submitted, um, this this function right is going to execute, and it basically takes two arguments: the record and the the AJAX handler. So these first few lines up here is basically just copy and paste that. That's going to take your data from your um, your that your user inputs into the the fields, the form, and put it into a an array, uh, it's more of like a dictionary key value pair called fields, okay? And then these next two lines here is really what the core of this tutorial is about. This is actually gonna take that data and insert it in, into our database. So right here, um, this is just necessary to access the database that's associated with your WordPress instance. And what we're doing here is we're asking that database or yeah we're taking that database instance and inserting the following data everything in between these two parentheses so the table we're using is called demo we just created that and we have an array of data fields that we want to add so into the name column we want to add the record that the user entered in the name field same thing for email whatever the user entered into the email field and message whatever the user entered into the message field. So that's the basic structure for how we're gonna get that data into the database. And then um, I'm simply just uh, assigning the value of whether that's successful or not into this variable called output, and we'll return that back. We're not gonna use it, but that's just something that I wanted to show you how to do. So let's go ahead and update this file. We'll save it and that is an instantaneous change. So if we go back to our uh, test web page here, I'll just refresh it just for good measure. And I'll type in some, some dummy data here. So we'll say billy, uh, billy, billy at gmail.com. And we can say, um, keep up the good work, Tony. Okay, so we'll go ahead and send that. Hit the hit the button right and we'll go back over into our php my admin page and let's see refresh and if everything goes according to plan we should see that data i have no clue why this is taking so long today uh, maybe i'll just refresh the page all right so there's our data so we're looking at the serial um i'm sorry not the serial the swamp view database and it just closed on me. But anyway, while that's loading, we can see that we now have Billy's name, his email, and his message in our demo table. So that's that's cool. That's exactly what we wanted to set out to do. Um, let, let's just try it one more time. We'll say um, Sally, Sally at gmail.com. And I'll say thank you, Tony, for this tutorial. Okay, 
let's actually let's do this we'll look at their developer tools so if you're using chrome view developer developer tools um just so i can show you the the result of this and we'll go to the network tab hit on a filter of xhr and we'll send that and the form was successfully sent and you can see that we get that um like i was talking about that return value uh is it in the header it's not in the header it's in the response okay so in the response, you'll see that um, we see our return value of success equaling one, okay? And just to make sure you understand where that's coming from, that was this, uh, this output that we're returning here. So the key is success, the value is one. So let's go check on our database. Um, I don't know what the, let's, I guess, try to refresh again, see if that works. Yeah. This, the, the website, the hosting company that this is hosted on is not doing too good today. Um, we'll refresh the whole page and there we go. We can see Sally's information, sally, sally at gmail.com. And thank you for this. Thank you, Tony, for this tutorial. Um, that's it. That is how you insert data from your Elementor forms into a database. This was a very basic example, but like I said throughout this tutorial here, um, you can make it more complex by adding different types of fields and doing some, you know, uh, validation on the data that the user inputs. So like, for example, if you're collecting an email address and uh, the user enters like some numbers instead of an email address, you can actually come back into your uh, code on your WordPress website in the functions.php file and do some validation of if that looks like a, looks like an email address or not, something like that, right? And then instead of returning successful equaling true down here on line 41, um, you can return false and handle that some other way. So, um, like I said, basic example, but uh, that should give you a good idea about how to do this. Guys, if you have any questions about saving Elementor form data into a database, let me know in the comments below. I'll do my best to help you out. And definitely, if you got some value out of this video, please give it a thumbs up. I have other videos about Elementor on this channel, so check some of them out. Please subscribe, and if you do, I'll see you in the next video.